sometimes we are unable to find the footprint from the internet. For example, in this case, I want to use a surface mount TCXO in my design. Unfortunately, its footprint is not available online. I checked Ultralibrarian, DigiKey, and even the manufacturer's website, but no symbol or footprint was available. So in this situation, we have to create a custom footprint ourselves. In this video, I will show you how to create a custom library, schematic symbol, and footprint in Altium Designer. Let's get started. First, right-click on the project and create a new schematic library. From the bottom left, click on the Add button. A dialog box will appear, where you can write the name of the symbol you want to create. Once you confirm, you'll see the component added in the library. Double-click on it to change its properties. You can add the designator, description, and other details if necessary. Now, click on the Pins tab. At this point, you'll see no pins added yet. Right-click and choose to add a new pin. Since this TCXO has six pins, add all of them. You can drag and place the pin anywhere you want. You can use copy-paste for speed or use the shortcut options from the toolbar. Use Ctrl plus R if you need to rotate the pins. Once the pins are placed, use the line tool to draw the outer boundary of the component symbol. The next step is editing the pins. Right click and choose Edit Pins. The component pin editor will open. Here you can assign pin numbers, names, and electrical types. For example, pin numbers 1, 2, and 4 are ground. Pin number 3 is the output. Pin number 5 is V control or not connected. And pin number 6 is VCC. Now the schematic symbol is complete. And you can use it in your schematic just like any other library component. At this point, you'll notice that no footprint is associated with this symbol. You can either link an existing footprint or create a new one. Let's create a new footprint for this TCXO. You can either create a new PCB library or add the footprint inside the existing library. Click on the Add button. Double click on it to change its properties. You can add the designator, description, and other details if necessary. You can also specify the size and height based on the datasheet. In this case, the height is 1.85 mm. The area can be calculated by multiplying the length and width values from the datasheet. Now, let's draw the outer boundary. Change to the mechanical one layer and insert a rectangle. Double click on it to edit its position, line thickness, length, and width. Adjust it properly according to the component's size. The next step is to create the pads. There are multiple ways to do this. You can right click and go to place, then choose pad, or use the toolbar shortcuts. Once a pad is placed, double click on it to modify its style. By default, the pad may be circular. But since this TCXO uses rectangular pads, change the style to rectangular. Also, make sure the pad is on the top layer. 
Note the length and width of pads from datasheet. Recommended length of pad is 1.7 mm and height is 1.4 mm. Double click on pad and set its length and width. Now create the array of pads. Use the paste special command. Type the numbers of components and spacing between them. Repeat this process for all pads, assigning the correct numbers as per the datasheet. Carefully adjust their spacing and alignment. Once all pads are placed, your footprint is complete. Now, link the footprint to your schematic symbol by editing the component properties and associating it with the new footprint you just created. That's it. Your TCXO custom footprint and symbol are now ready to use in your project. This process can be applied to any component where a footprint is not readily available online. Once you practice it, creating custom symbols and footprints will become a simple and quick task. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. In the next tutorial we will make complete PCB.